And if any master reborn, the destiny changes, you know, according to the, the period of human history. They don't always do the same thing. Somewhere a long time ago, I read one magazine in America, and they said, Jesus, he has predicted, he said he will come back as a woman, and they will not recognize me. That's what he said. I'm not sure how trustworthy this kind of uh, magazine's report. Okay, I'm just telling you for your uh, entertainment <laughs> info. Like one in Bodhisattva, yeah, Avalokitesvara, she reincarnates time after time, life after life, yeah. But sometimes she was a wife, she's a normal wife, and sometimes she is uh, uh, somebody else, yeah. And in Buddha's time, she was just a bodhisattva. No wife, no husband, no children, nothing. Yes. You remember one of the story about Kwanin Bodhisattva? Yes. She was married to a man, yeah? And at night when her husband was sleeping, she saw one of his hair growing very uh, unruly, <laughs> unregularly, and inorderly out of his chin. So she was thinking, Oh, she wants to cut it, trim it, make him look handsome. Yeah. And she just get a knife, you know. She has not done it. She got a knife from kitchen, yeah, sat next to him and was about to do it. And she put her knife next to the, the neck already, a uh, uh, chin already, and the husband suddenly woke up. And he sounded alarm, you know, tell everybody, oh, she's gonna kill me, she's killing me, help, help, and all that. The whole household woke up. And she was scared, you know, of course, she's frightened. Everybody woke up and then want to catch her. So she had to run. She had no time to explain. And she had to run, and she ran, and then on the way she saw a temple, a Buddhist temple, and she went in. And she told them that she's a man. <laughs> She had to say that she's a man and she wants to be a monk there. Yeah. So, of course, the Buddhist monks, they don't always uh, check in too much about their history or besides. It's very difficult to check now. Those days, they don't have computer, <laughs> right? They don't have anything stored in the uh, software, hardware, or whatever where that you say. Ah, okay. I had no idea what software is and what hardware is and what middle or where. I just wear what I have to wear. <laughs> the rest, <laughs> no idea. <laughs> now, uh, so they didn't check anything. They just say, oh, of course, if you want to be a monk, hey, welcome, welcome. Nah? Because in Buddhist tradition, if anybody wants to be a monk, you have to let him. Hmm. And if you stop them, to be a monk, yeah, then you have very bad karma, yeah, according to the sutras. And if you let somebody be a monk, willingly or help him, her to become a monk, and then your marriage is very, very big, huge, immense, yeah? Remember those uh, Buddha scriptures I read to you? Okay. So, of course, they welcome. And the, the temple always need uh, one or two more hands, you know, to help with cleaning up repairing, as well as, you know, all kind of uh, arts and ends stuff, yeah? Yeah. So she became a monk and stayed there peacefully, safely, for a while, until one of the Buddhist followers, a beautiful woman, came along. She liked him, or her, or him, yes, <laughs> she liked her. They like, she liked the form of that new monk. Oh, because she's beautiful. Kwanin Bodhisattva, as a lay person at that time, was beautiful already. That's why she was married into a rich family, a yeah, good husband. And even if she shaved her hair, she still looks stunning. He, uh, she has <laughs> beautiful, handsome. Oh, this woman fell head over heel in love with this monk, nun, whatever, <laughs> monk, okay, so-called monk. Ah, she keep trying so hard to get him. But of course, 
this monk is no monkey business, yeah? So, of course, he refused her outright all the time, anytime, and she felt very hurt. This person, this woman, this lady, a uh, girl, she was actually a daughter of some very influential family, yeah? So she won't take no for an answer, eh? Anyway, all of her affection is uh, very unrepaid, and she will feel very, very, very frustrated and angry. And then somehow she managed to uh, have an affair with a servant boy in the house, and then she became pregnant. And then in those times, if you're pregnant without being wedded, then you are a criminal. They beat you up. They dig a hole in the ground and put your stomach there, and you lay down with the stomach in the hole so that it won't hurt the baby, and then they beat you up and until you confess who the father is. She confessed that the, the new uh, monk in the temple, the handsome uh, nun, is her uh, lover. Man, okay, they came and dragged her out him, her hour, and then uh, beat him up also terribly, tell him he has confessed or not. She remained silent, because if he confessed, he's a liar. And if he doesn't confess, uh, then also no good. They keep beating her, the woman also, to get another uh, father, okay? So he just keep uh, quiet, and finally, they cannot beat him up anymore. They also got tired of beating. They say, okay. Uh, you cannot be a monk anymore, and uh, when the child is born, we will talk about that. Yeah, you want to marry this woman or not? He say no, no can do, don't want. <laughs> so of course they throw him out. So the temple people also cannot do much more. They put him her outside in a little hut. Yeah, maybe a Mongolian tent outside, outside of the temple gate because he's not allowed to stay inside anymore as a monk, no more monk. Yeah. And so they still let her do the work, you know, taking care of the temple and all that, but he's not allowed to be a monk or stay inside, you know, anymore. So he stay outside. And when the baby was born, the family, the girl, took the baby and brought it to the temple and said, you have to take care. And she wants to marry somebody else. At that time, okay, something like that. I can't remember very well. But it's not a big mistake that I made, <laughs> whether I remember or not. And then, so the monk didn't know what to do. He had to take care of the baby. Yeah. He took really good care with all the motherly love, which is <laughs> very easy, uh, manifested because she's a woman and a loving one. So every day, she, a monk, uh, went out begging for milk and food and then bring the child up uh, until he grows up, maybe about nine, ten years already. And then one day this monk died. The Kwan Yin Bodhisattva manifestation died. I mean, reincarnation died. She died and then of course they have to well, after a person dies, they wipe you, they bathe you with something, and then they change your clothes into clean one, and put flour or something, and then carry you into the coffin. And then they realize that this is no man, it was a woman. So everybody oh, feels so, 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 so regretful, and so sad, and so sorrowful. So they worship her from then on.